Welcome to Merisha Bay Guvrin, one of Israel's several national parks. I'm David Sussman, and I'm here to show you the land of Israel. So this national park has two names and three time periods. Merisha, its biblical name, is from the time that Joshua and the Israelites crossed the Jordan River, conquered, liberated, and settled the hilltop here in Merisha. However, in 586 BCE, the Babylonians will come in and destroy Merisha, bringing in the second time period. Although it was still known as Merisha, the people who populated this area were known as the Edomians. The third period of time is when the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem in the year 70 CE. They will build a prestigious Roman city here in Merisha that will now be known as Beit Guvrin. This Roman city was equipped with a coliseum, an amphitheater, a bathhouse, a cardo, everything that an important Roman city would have. The main source of income here in Merisha and Beit Guvrin throughout the ages was olive oil. Just imagine all of the valleys that you see far and wide from the top of Merisha would have been filled with olive groves. And in the season when those olives are ripe, they would be picked and immediately brought over here to be crushed. Once that olive is crushed, all of the fluids are removed, both the water and the oil. And within minutes, they separate. Olive oil and water. And that olive oil was so precious that we know the land of Israel used to export olive oil around this entire region. Olive oil was such a major production here in Merisha Bay Guvrin that hundreds of pieces of olive presses have been discovered in this national park alone. But here in Israel, literally thousands have been discovered. Just right here, you have dozens of pieces of olive presses made out of limestone mostly, but even basalt, which is volcanic rock, which means it had to have been imported, most likely from the region of the Golan Heights, which also shows us how much money was involved in the trade of olive oil. Who's hungry for pigeon? I bet you none of you are. Well, if you lived here 2,200 years ago, you'd probably be thinking that's a delicious meal. Because 2,200 years ago, when the Edomians lived here, another source of income for them was the columbarium or the dovecote. This is one of the largest ones that have been discovered thus far here in the National Park. All of these cubby holes here, each would have a nest occupied by pigeons or doves. Just this one alone had 2,000 niches for pigeons. Now that's a lot of food. Let's take a minute now to talk about the Edomians whose ruins you can see behind me. And that's because this is the time period that most people are going to focus on when they visit Beit Guvrin Marisha. And that's because there's a great program for tourists called Dig for a Day, where people like yourselves can actually become an archeologist for the day. That's right. You dig into caves, you haul out the dirt, you sift through it looking for treasures that haven't seen the light of day in over 2,000 years. But who are the Edomians? And what are they doing in the land of Israel? Well, the Edomians arrived here after the Babylon sent the Jews into exile. When the Jews returned 70 years later, they went to the Edomians and said, hey, you know this is Jewish land. After all, it's written all over the place in the number one seller, the Bible, that this is the land that was promised to the descendants of Abraham, the Jewish people. But the Edomians said, yeah, right. You guys were slaves for 70 years. You're weak. You're poor. You cannot defeat us. And in the ancient world, might made right. One of the great activities here in Beit Guvrin Marisha is to climb through one of the cave systems that has been completely excavated by tourists who visited the Dig for the Day program. Underneath these massive cave systems, you can find cisterns, olive presses, and all sorts of rooms that were used for various types of activities. In fact, the cave system we're walking into right now, you can see at the bottom, has this beautiful olive press. Similar to the olive press that we saw before when we were talking about the olive oil industry here in Marisha. But this one is located exactly 
where it was found. In this particular cave, you can notice this step stone structure. This was formed by the people digging out the blocks which were used to build the homes up above. The Edomians had to constantly replace the bricks that they were building their houses because it's just chalk and it would erode due to the inclement weather. So they kept on having to dig further and deeper down into the ground. And some of these caves, like the one I'm standing in right now, are literally six stories deep. Hey guys, if you liked that episode, please subscribe below. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment. It helps out my channel a whole lot. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.